Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome to Ummah Radio. You are listening to the Tafsir class with myself, Abu Musab. Alright, so we are still doing Tafsir ibn Kathir, Surah Al-Baqarah, and on this volume 1, and in this, which is ayah number 8, and in this particular volume, it's page 32. We had last completed the ayah خَتَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ وَعَلَىٰ سَمْعِهِمْ وَعَلَىٰ أَبَصَارِهِمْ غِشَاوَةُ وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ عَظِيمٌ So, we are now doing ayah number 9. Oh, I mean, ayah number 8. Any case, so then we can start. بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه The ayah... Which is the, or rather the two ayat which he is discussing tonight. He says, "وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَقُولُ آمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ وَبِالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَمَا هُمْ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ يُخَارِعُونَ اللَّهَ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَمَا يَخْدَعُونَ إِلَّا أَنْفُسَهُمْ وَمَا يَشْعُرُونَ." That from the people they are those who say we believe in Allah and in the last day, the day of judgment. وَمَا هُمْ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ But in reality, they are not believers. يُخَارِعُونَ اللَّهَ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا they try to deceive Allah and the believe and those who have believed. وَمَا يَخْدَعُونَ إِلَّا أَنفُسَهُمْ But they are not deceiving anyone but their own selves. وَمَا يَشْعُرُونَ While they are not even realizing that they, the, the only ones they are deceiving is themselves. Okay, they, it, it's possible that they are deceiving the believers, but obviously nobody can deceive Allah. So they think they are deceiving Allah by expressing belief with their, th- with their tongues but in reality they are concealing kufr in their hearts and they think that Allah does not know it so Imam Ibn Kathir rahimahullah he says لما تقدم وصف المؤمنين في صدر السورة بأربع آيات ثم عرف حال الكافرين بآيتين after Allah had previously mentioned the description of the believers at the beginning of the surah with the first four ayat so the first four ayat of Surah Al-Baqarah dealt with the, the the characteristics of the believers the mu'minin ثم عرف حال الكافرين بآيتين then after the four ayat of the believers Allah mentioned two ayat which dealt with the description and the state of the kuffar now he says شرع تعالى في بيان حال المنافقين now after mentioning these four and then the two which came after now Allah starts mentioning the state and the characteristics and the habits and ways of the munafiqeen, the hypocrites. الذين يظهرون الإيمان ويبطنون الكفر. Those who express openly iman and be, uh, they openly express iman ويبطنون الكفر, but they conceal kufr in their hearts. ولما كان أمرهم يشتبه على كثير من الناس. Now, because due to the fact that they Matter, the matter with regards to the munafiqeen, they confuse the many people because obviously they are showing the people as though they are believers, but in fact they are not believers. So it's very confusing to uh, an ordinary person. So he says, "Atnaba fi dhikrihim bi sifatim muta'addida." That because of this, Allah went into detail by mentioning them with a number of characteristics and qualities. كل منها نفاق. All of them are hypocrisy. كما أنزل كما أنزل سورة براءة وسورة المنافقين فيهم. Like how Allah had revealed Surah براءة, which is Surah Tauba, and also Allah revealed Surah المنافقين. Both these surahs were revealed with regards to the munafiqin. The maj- mas- a, a large portion of Surah Tauba, Surah البراءة, it is to Surah براءة is to do with the munafiqin. And obviously, the Surah Munafiqeen, the name itself tells you that it has a lot to do with the Munafiqeen. So, he says, وَذَكْرَهُمْ فِي سُورَةِ النُّورِ وَغَيْرِهَا مِنَ السُورِ And Allah also mentioned the Munafiqeen in portions of Surah An-Nur and other surahs as well of the Quran. تَعْرِيفًا لِأَحْوَالِهِمْ لِتُجْتَنَبُوا وَيُجْتَنَبُوا مَنْ لِتُجْتَنَبَ وَيُجْتَنَبُوا مَنْ تَلَبَّسَ بِهَا أَيْضًا The reason Allah mentioned Surah Bara'a, Surah Munafiqeen, Surah in Surah Nur and other places of the Quran is to explain and make known their state so that you and everybody else who may get involved in mixed up with them so that you can know to avoid them and treat them as the munafiqeen that they are 
فقال تعالى ومن الناس من يقول آمنا بالله الآيات so because of all of this he says uh, at this point Allah Ta'ala mentioned ومن الناس من يقول آمنا بالله from the people there are those who say we believe in Allah and then he mentions the rest of the ayat now he moves on to the explanation so he says والنفاق هو إظهار الخير وإسرار الشر نفاق hypocrisy it is openly expressing goodness while concealing evil this is now just the definition of what nifaq is so he says it is of many types nifaq is of different types so he says the first type of nifaq of hypocrisy is the hypocrisy in belief itself and he says Hypocrisy in belief is that which causes its companion to remain permanently forever and all eternity in the fire of Jahannam. Why? Because you are not a Muslim. You claim to be a Muslim, but in fact you are a kafir. And we know that in al munafiqeen fi dark al asfal min al nar that the munafiqeen, the hypocrites, as Allah mentions in the Quran, they are in the lowest pit of Jahannam. So when you have this, this belief, this nifaq, this hypocrisy in your belief that you openly show as though you are a Muslim but in reality you hate Islam and you are actually a kafir this type of person is the worst types and this person will remain forever in Jahannam the next type he says وعمليون. the other type of hypocrisy is amali, it is hypocrisy through your actions so he says وهو من أكبر ذنوب, and it is from the most major of sins لأن المنافق يخالف قوله فعله the munafiq his act his uh, his speech contradicts his actions wasirruhu ala niyatahu his what he ha- conceals is different it contradicts that which he shows to people wa inma nuzilat sifatul munafiqin fi surat al fi suwar al madaniya and all the ayat with regards to the description of the munafiqeen it all came down and was revealed in the madani surahs لِأَنَّ مَكَّةَ لَمْ يَكُنْ فِيهَا نِفَاقٌ بَلْ كَانَ خِلَافُهُ because during the time of Mecca there was no hypocrisy in fact it was quite the opposite okay just to go one more point on when he said here وَعَمَلِي that the second type of hypocrisy is the hypocrisy in action and this is like Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned various things in the hadith that there are three things that if a person does this he will have a quality of the manafiqeen in him إِذَا حَدَّثَ كَذَبَ when he speaks he lies وَإِذَا وَعَدَ أَخْلَفَ when he promises he breaks his promise وَإِذَا عَاهَدَ غَدَرَ when he uh, is entrusted he is proven to be deceitful and in another hadith وَإِذَا خَاصَمَ فَجَرَ when he argues he becomes abusive and there are other things mentioned in the hadith as well with regards to the characteristics and the uh, uh, qualities of the uh, which are termed as nifaq it will not this is not the nifaq which puts a person and uh, outside the fold of islam and puts a person into jahannam amongst the kuffar no this person still remains a believer he's still a, a muslim but it is an evil characteristic to have That's, that is why he says It is from the most major of major sins But it's not kufr yet Not unless you have a belief of hypocrisy So a hypo- so normally people use the term today A lot that you are a hypocrite You are a hypocrite To put it more in a different terminology If we were to say Like how salah linguistically uh, refers to dua supplication while sh- the shari the legal meaning of dua is as we know fajr dhuhr asr maghrib and isha if we use that same sort of terminology here then nifaq and hypocrisy then hypocrisy from a shari definition would be this from an i'tiqari point of view a belief point of view which would put its pers- its holder the one who holds this belief in jahannam while the linguistic meaning would be as you can see here with regards to actions that you are a believer but you are two-faced you show one side but in fact you are the opposite you smile in front of a person but you uh, gossip behind his back and you hate uh, you hate him and all those sort of stuff so that's just the two types
All right. So he says, in any case, he continued on and he said that all of this, the Munafiq, he is such a person whose speech contradicts his actions, whose uh, open, his uh, secrets con- is contradict- uh, contrary to what he exposes to the people. And all of these descriptions of the Munafiqeen, it was revealed in the Madani Surahs because Mecca, during the time of Mecca, there was no nifaq, there was no hypocrisy. In fact, it was quite the opposite. What is the opposite? In Mecca, there was clear-cut outright opposition the mushrikeen of Mecca they were they held back nothing they attacked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam they were abusive they were insulting and everything like we know as has come in the through the history books of what took place in the seerah and all of this so we know what took place over there there was nobody who claimed to be a Muslim while in fact he was a kafir everybody over there they were happy to be kuffar and they fought and died upon kuffar many of those f- f- uh, mushrikeen of Mecca so therefore he says it was quite the opposite people openly expressed their kuffar and their hatred towards Islam and the Muslims it was only when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa came to Medina now there was a base for Islam Islam was growing Islam was strong the Muslims were gathering in number and there was now a small army the Muslims had won a decisive victory at Badr and so the strength of the Muslims were just growing and growing so many people for various reasons like the Jews who would try to undermine Islam by accepting Islam while in fact they were actually kuffar they were they were in their own right they were munafiqeen because they would come and join Islam and a code a, a openly apparently like that accepting Islam and a few days later they would say no this is not the right religion and they would become murtad uh, again supposedly while in reality they it was all a ploy by them they had never accepted Islam in reality so they still remain kuffar the whole period th- throughout like that so technically they were also munafiqeen but then you had people like Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salul Jad ibn, uh, ibn Qais and other people of the munafiqeen who they so to say accepted Islam openly but forever behind the scenes they were trying to undermine Islam and the Muslims all the time right through until Allah exposed them as being kuffar and everything of the sort like that so this hiding of your kufr and exposing Islam this only came about during the time of Medina when these people were now afraid of the consequences of what would happen to them if the kufr was exposed because other, if the kufr was exposed publicly, then they would have been f- lumped in with the rest of the mushrikeen and fought and killed uh, uh, along with them. And that is why they hid their kufr and just tried to undermine Islam from the sidelines the whole time. So he says, وَلِهَذَا نَبَّهَ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ عَلَىٰ صِفَاتِ الْمُنَافِقِينَ لِأَلَّا يَغْتَرُّ بِظَاهِرِ أَمْرِهِمْ مِنْ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And for this reason, Allah inform the belie- Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inform the believers about the characteristics of the hypocrites so that they do not become deceived by their apparent actions so that the believers do not become deceived by their apparent actions فَيَقَعُ لِذَلِكَ فَسَادٌ عَرِيضٌ مِنْ عَدْمِ الْإِحْدِرَازِ مِنْهُمْ so because as a result of that great fasad would take place Great corruption would take place because of not taking caution with regards to these people. Because you take them obviously now as Muslims, as believers and everything and you deal with them and they sell you out on the side everything that you are doing and and he mentions here also further he says وَمِنْ إِعْتِقَادِ إِيمَانِهِمْ وَهُمْ كُفَّارٌ فِي نَفْسِ الْأَمْرِ You are not taking caution from them and f- cautioning yourself against the belief of the hypocritical belief while in reality they are disbelieving in this very same deen that they are claiming to be believing in وَهَذَا مِنَ الْمَحْذُورَاتِ الْكِبَارِ أَنْ يَظُنَّ بِأَهْلِ الْفُجُورِ خَيْرًا and this is from the major things that the person should be aware of he says أَنْ يَظُنَّ بِأَهْلِ الْفُجُورِ خَيْرًا that you think good of the evil people أَنْ يَظُنَّ بِأَهْلِ الْفُجُورِ those who people who are fast as you can say a fasiq and a fajr that you think good of such people this is something that should not be done incidentally there are the, or rather I should say there is a narration which is to do with the innovators uh, the, uh, من وقر صاحب بدعة فقد أعان على هدم الإسلام that whomsoever 
uh, praise whoever whosoever honors a innovator then faqad a'ana ala hadmi al-islam then he has aided in the destruction of islam imam ghazali rahimahullah he reports a different similar meaning but a different narration which in his narration it says man akrama fasiqan if I'm not mistaken I think his narration says man akrama fasiqan then the rest of the narration continues so instead of man waqqara sahibu bina'atin his narration mentions man akrama fasiqan so the one narration says that whoever honors a innovator an innovator and the other narration says whoever honors a fasiq so that is why you can see here that people who are outright evil like this they should not be put on platforms of goodness and piety and how that you should think that, okay this is a pious person this is a good person they should be known that this person is an evil munafiq and that people should avoid him any case he says فَقَالَ تَعَالَى so Allah Ta'ala says وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَقُولُ آمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ وَبِالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ so Allah Ta'ala mentions, and up from the people, they are those who say we believe in Allah and in the last day. أي يقولون ذلك قولا كما قال تعالى إذا جاءك المنافقون قالوا نشهد إنك لرسول الله. Meaning these people they say this only by the by their tongue, like how Allah Ta'ala says in the this is this ayah incidentally is from Surah Munafiqin. This one that he quotes here now. إذا جاءك المنافقون قالوا نشهد إنك لرسول الله. When the hypocrites, the munafiqin, when they come to you, meaning you or Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم, they say we bear witness that indeed you are the messenger of Allah. أي إنما يقولون ذلك إذا جاءك فقط لا في نفس الأمر. Imam Ibn Kathir رحمه الله he says that the munafiqin, the hypocrites, they say this to you only when they come to you. But in re- not believing really in what they are saying. They're just saying the statement, but they don't believe it. وَلَيْسَ الْأَمْرُ كَذَلِكَ Because the reality is not like that, because they don't believe that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the messenger of Allah. They held their, their beliefs of kufr, and they just openly showed to the people that they are supposedly believing that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was indeed the messenger of Allah. So in any case, he says, كَمَا كَذَّبَهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي شَهَادَتِهِمْ بِقَوْلِهِ وَاللَّهُ يَشْهَدُ إِنَّ الْمُنَافِقِينَ لَكَاذِبُونَ Like he says, like how Allah Ta'ala has belied them in their shahada, their so-called witnessing and bearing testimony to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam being the messenger of Allah. Allah says, وَاللَّهُ يَشْهَدُ إِنَّ الْمُنَافِقِينَ لَكَاذِبُونَ Allah bears witness that indeed the munafiqeen, the hypocrites, they are the liars. This is also from Surah Munafiqeen. In fact, it's the same ayah. إِذَا جَاءَكَ الْمُنَافِقُونَ قَالُوا نَشَهَدُ إِنَّكَ لَرَسُولُ اللَّهِ وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ إِنَّكَ لَرَسُولُ وَاللَّهُ يَشَهَدُ إِنَّ الْمُنَافِقِينَ لَكَاذِبُونَ That's how the surah starts. That the, in, when the hypocrites come to you, they say we bear witness that you are in, indeed the messenger of Allah. Then, وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ إِنَّكَ لَرَسُولُ And indeed Allah knows that you are His Messenger. وَاللَّهُ يَشْهَدُ إِنَّ الْمُنَافِقِينَ لَكَاذِبُونَ And Allah bears witness that indeed the munafiqeen, the hypocrites, they are all just a bunch of liars. So, وَفِي اِعْتِقَادِهِمْ بِقَوْلِهِ وَمَا هُمْ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ And Allah re- rejected the belief also as well when Allah says, وَمَا هُمْ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ and in fact, they are not believers. In this meaning, in the same ayah that we just said here, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَقُولُ آمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ وَبِالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَمَا هُمْ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ They are those who say they believe in Allah and they believe in the last day, but in reality they don't believe. So Allah belied and rejected both the so-called testimony of faith and Allah rejected the so-called iman as well. Okay, so continuing on, he says, وَقُولُوا تَعَالَى يُخَادِعُونَ اللَّهَ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا In the ayah, Allah says, يُخَادِعُونَ اللَّهَ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا They in- try to deceive Allah and, the belie- and those who have believed. أي بإظهار ما أظهروه من الإيمان مع إسرارهم الكفر أي meaning they expose that which they have exposed openly of belief despite Concealing the kufr in their hearts. يعتقدون بجهلهم أنهم يخدعون الله بذلك وأن ذلك نافعهم عنده. They believe in their ignorance that they are deceiving Allah 
by doing this and they think that this nifaq that's open uh, claiming to be from Islam they think that this will benefit them in the court of Allah وَأَنَّهُ يَرُوجُ عَلَيْهِ كَمَا يَرُوجُ عَلَى بَعْضِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And that it will be accepted by Allah like how it is accepted by some of the mu'mineen. Meaning that because of them exposing iman apparently to the people, many people believe that they are really Muslims because we don't know what is being concealed in their hearts. So uh, what he's mentioning here is that as a result of this, many Muslims believe that the Munafiqeen were in fact Muslims, but in fact they were not Muslims. So he says, like how it, some Muslims believe that the Munafiqeen were Muslims, because obviously not knowing what was in their hearts, these Munafiqeen now thought in their ignorance that Allah is also going to just accept them just like that and let everything pass by. وَلِهَذَا قَابَلَهُمْ عَلَىٰ أَتِقَادِهِمْ ذَلِكَ بِقَوْلِهِ وَمَا يَخْدَعُونَ إِلَّا أَنفُسَهُمْ وَمَا يَشْعُرُونَ And he says, and for this reason, Allah confronted them upon their belief, with this belief of theirs, by saying, وَمَا يَخْدَعُونَ إِلَّا أَنفُسَهُمْ وَمَا يَشْعُرُونَ While in reality, they do not deceive anyone but their own selves, and they do not perceive it. أي ما يغرون بصنيعهم هذا إلا أنفسهم وما يشعرون بذلك من أنفسهم أي meaning they do not deceive by doing this action except their own selves the only ones they are fooling is themselves وما يشعرون بذلك من أنفسهم they themselves they don't perceive that they are deceiving themselves they think they're deceiving the world but they're only just deceiving themselves كما قال تعالى إن المنافقين يخادعون الله وهو خادعهم like how Allah Ta'ala mentions, indeed the hypocrites, they, they, يُخَادِعُونَ Allah, they try to deceive Allah, وَهُوَ خَادِعُهُمْ While in reality, it is Allah who is turning their deception against them. I don't like to translate it and say, while in fact Allah is deceiving them, because to use the term deception is not a good term, especially not using it for Allah. So, Therefore, I rather translate and say that وَهُوَ خَادِعُهُمْ But in reality, they th- these munafiqeen, they are thinking that they are deceiving Allah. But in reality, Allah is turning their own he- plots and plans and deception against themselves. So they are deceiving themselves while they are ignorantly thinking that they are deceiving Allah. So he says, وَمِنَ الْقُرَّاءِ مَنْ قَرَأَ وَمَا يُخَادِعُونَ وَكِلَ الْقِرَاءَتَيْنِ يَرْجِعُ إِلَىٰ مَعَنًا وَاحِدٍ He says, and from the Qurra, some of the, in the different Qira'at of the, the ayah, some Qurra, they read the ayah, instead of وَمَا يَخْدَعُونَ They say, وَمَا يُخَادِعُونَ But he says, but both Qira'at, both recitations, are they come back, down to just about the same meaning so the yukhadi'un and yakhda'un the meaning is the same that's basically what he is saying all right then on in that case we will end on this point here inshallah so just to wrap it up in a nutshell these munafiqeen, they think they are deceiving the believers, but in fact they are deceiving only their own selves, while they do not even perceive that they are deceiving themselves. Okay, and like I said, this yukhadi'un and wama yakhda'un, wama yukhadi'un, it's a linguistic difference, but in but when you when it comes down to the translation perspective, the meaning would again come down to the same thing, and that's why it says both qiraas it returns to the same uh, the same issue. It comes to the same meaning, so it's just okay. Is it cause their deception don't matter or uh, hurt the believers? The deception does. Uh, Obviously, it was a, a, when you person looks back in history, how Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salul, the kafir, how time and again he tried his evil to ha- harm and hurt the Muslims time and time again. So there was a lot of ha- hurt and harm coming from them. But the reason why Allah rejects them like this is because Allah is there to 
in fact Allah wa- was there and is there and always will be there to safeguard and protect the Muslims against them so therefore although it like it, 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 rather, Imam Ibn Kathir rahimahullah he mentioned that some Muslims because we don't know what is in the hearts of the Munafiqeen so therefore some Muslims they get mixed up with these people and they consider these people to be Muslim because as far as they can see these people are showing that they are Muslim so therefore they accepted them to be as such and obviously when such people sell you out and things like this it does cause hurt and harm but Allah is there to repel and reject and protect the Muslims from the harm that will come as a result of these munafiqeen okay in is this uh, does this ayah have any incident behind it a, a reason for revelation okay a specific reason for revelation I, I do not know it's because but on the whole this was a common occurrence of the munafiqeen they would come and they would make these statements and say we believe and we believe and everything comes out with the muslims and then they go and hide it they would took far and say no we don't believe we uh, we are just saying that we are believing but in fact we are with you and everything like this so these this was factual things that was like happening on a so to say a daily basis at the time after the muslims had moved to medina and the Islamic State was set up and everything like that so I do not know if this was if there was one specific incident which caused the revelation of these particular ayat or whether Allah revealed it because it was happening the whole time like I say it was there wasn't just one or two munafiqeen there were many many munafiqeen who were around we just know the famous the, in fact the leader the most famous of all munafiqeen Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salul there was other munafiqeen as well like I mentioned another one is Jad ibn Qais uh, he was the one uh, always especially where jihad was concerned the munafiqeen were always there to distance and themselves and to cause harm to the believers in the ayah when the when the Muslims were going to fight the Kufar, then Jad ibn Qais, he was one of the, those who said, La taftinni. Don't put me into fitna. Don't cause difficulty for me. What actually happened at the time was that the Muslims were going to fight the the Romans. And Jad ibn Qais, he say, he told the Muslims that he, he finds himself extremely attracted to white women the Roman women and if he goes he's going to fall into fitna with them so don't take me to jihad I want to stay behind all the lies and things that these munafiqeen would come out with so uh, the, he was one of those also one of the big ones so they would come out like this come with the army and then say no make some excuse and they take all the munafiqeen with them and leave the battlefield and then the muslims are left with a small amount but Allah always being with the muslims Allah had safeguarded and protected and granted victory to the muslims time and time again but in any case this was how the munafiqeen used to operate it's, uh, all of them like this whether it was Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salul whether it was Jad ibn Qais or whether it was any of the smaller ones whose names were not explicitly mentioned we don't know exactly the amount of who they really were Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa had given the list of their names to Hadrat Hudayfa radiyallahu anhu that is why he was known as Sahib al-Sir the keeper of secrets because he knew the names of all who these munafiqeen were and that is why during the khilaf of Hadrat Umar radiyallahu anhu when a person used to die, Hadrat Umar radiyallahu anhu used to ask, "Is Hadrat Hudayfa radiyallahu anhu there at the janaza?" If the people would say yes, then Hadrat Umar radiyallahu anhu would attend. If they said no, then he would then he would not attend because Hadrat Umar radiyallahu anhu his his reasoning was that Hadrat Hudayfa radiyallahu anhu would never be attending any funeral, any janaza of any munafiq. So therefore, if he wasn't there, most likely this person was a munafiq, and so therefore he would abstain as well. Hadrat Hudayfa radiyallahu anhu, he was entrusted with the names of these people, and he, he it was a secret, so therefore he never divulged it to anyone. Hadrat Umar radiyallahu anhu, and this shows the great amount of taqwa of Hadrat Umar radiyallahu anhu, that he came to ask Hadrat Hudayfa radiyallahu anhu, is my name on the list? And we know who Hadrat Umar radiyallahu anhu is. To, there's no way on earth that any sort, 
or rather you can even use the term nifaq in the same sentence with Hadith Umar radiallahu anhu. But that was the taqwa and the iman that he came to find out is my name. Am I also one of those munafiqeen on the list? Obviously we know Hadith Umar radiallahu anhu was never on any list uh, like that. But in any case, so that is why if, if Hadith Hudayfa radiallahu anhu would attend, he would attend the janazah, then he would know this is a, a good person, there is no problem. But if he did not attend, then Hadith Umar radiallahu anhu would not attend as well. And like I say, it was a secret given from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to him and that is why he never divulged it not to any of the other Sahaba despite the fact that all the Sahaba as we know none of them were munafiqeen but he did not divulge it to anyone because it was a secret he was keeping that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam entrusted him with okay so that was the end of ayah number 8 and ayah number 9 both ayat with regards to the munafiqeen and it will continue on in ayah number 10 and the next few ayat thereafter as well. But we will be ending on this point here at the end of ayah number 9 for tonight. And inshallah next time we will continue on from the next ayah. Fi qulubi marad. Those, uh, these munafiqeen who in, in their hearts there is a sickness. So until then we will end on this point here for now so on that point we will end for now when we say wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina muhammad subhanallahi wa bihamdihi subhanaka allahumma wa bihamdik nashadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk wa sallamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh